Today, for our Math Strategies video for third grade, we are going to be using the distributive property to break apart factors in order to make multiplication problems easier to solve. When using this strategy, it is best to use numbers that are easier for you. This is a strategy that I still use today, um, and I still focus on the numbers that I am comfortable with, and it makes multiplication easier. So let's go ahead and look at our first problem, 3 times 7. So let's go ahead and break apart the seven because I'm kind of comfortable with my threes but not as comfortable with my sevens. So I'm gonna break apart the seven into five and two. Okay, and this kind of looks like a number bond that you used maybe in first grade. Okay, when you break apart that seven, you have five and two. I'm very comfortable with my fives and I'm very comfortable with my twos. So now I'm going to now I'm going to multiply the numbers that I broke apart. So I'm going to say 3 times 5, which gives me 15. I'm comfortable with that. And then I'm going to say 3 times 2, which gives me 6. And when I add up my partial products, I'm going to get 21. Okay? So let's take a look at the array we have here. You can see it, it represents three rows of seven. So when I break this apart using the distributive property, what I'm actually saying is three rows of five and then three rows of two. And of course I'm adding those together and I'm still getting 21. I'm just breaking apart the seven to make this multiplication easier for me. So one way we can write it is we could say three times five plus two, okay? Or we could think about it just as we did up here, three times five plus three times two, okay? Now I broke apart the seven into five and two because that's what makes sense to me. There are other ways that you could have, you could have broken this apart. Um, we could have broken apart the seven into four and three we could have broken apart into one and six, whatever we're comfortable with. We also could have broken apart the three, okay? And maybe two and one and multiply the two by seven and then multiply the one by seven, giving us 14 plus seven and still giving us 21. So the great thing about the distributive property is that it can work for us, whatever we're comfortable with. Okay, so we're gonna look at one more example Okay, and this one is six times eight. So I feel comfortable with my eights. I mean, with my sixes, but not so much with my eights. So I'm going to break apart this eight into two numbers that make a little bit more sense to me. And again, I'm using that five because I'm really comfortable with my five. And then I'm also breaking apart into the three. So again, this looks like our um, number bonds that we used maybe in first grade. So. I'm going to take that 6 and I'm going to multiply it by my 5, getting 30, okay? And then I'm going to take my 6 again and I'm going to multiply it by my 3, giving me 18. So when I add up my partial products, okay, I'm going to get 48. So if I come down to my array here, 6 rows of 8, I would have 48 to show what I have done here with my um, distributive property, I said six rows of five, and then six rows of three. Again, when I add these up, I'm still gonna get 48. So you could look at this as six times three plus five, or you could look at it as six times five, adding it together with six times three, okay? And again, I could have broken apart this eight into different ways that maybe made more sense, more sense, more sense. I sense I could have into six and two, okay? I could have also broken apart the six instead of the eight if I didn't feel as comfortable with my sixes. So again, this is a great strategy to use when multiplying facts with larger numbers or maybe numbers that we're not as comfortable or confident with. It will make multiplying facts easier.